to another gathering of the Gold Key Adventurers Society. Have a seat by the fire as we prepare to help you unlock the secrets of the travel life. From theme park thrills to Purple Mountain's majesty, we want to see it all and do it all, and we want to help you do the same. We all have those bucket list trips, once in a lifetime destinations that we'll get to someday. We're here to help you make your travel dreams a reality. Buy the ticket, take the trip. Where do you want to go? Come on, come on, come on, I'll tell me what's on your bucket list. Okay, hey, okay, hey. It's a beautiful day. Okay, hey, okay, hey. It's a beautiful day. Happy birthday to Walt Disney, that is. And we're celebrating by imagining how we'd spend just one day with him if he came back in the year 2020. But first, travel news, including the opening date of Super Nintendo World, creepy Christmas caroling in Wales, and Spider Fight Club in Japan. Shine up your Phoenix gem and set your nostalgia dials to maximum. It's time to hit the trail with the Gold Key Adventure Society. We're up in the attic of Gold Key Adventure Society HQ gathering up all the assorted winter holiday decorations we've collected during our expeditions around the globe when we find a long forgotten bundle tucked away in a dark and dusty corner. We carry it over near a window where the light is better and carefully unroll the long cylindrical package. In it is a long wooden staff with root leg projections at the top that appear to form a receptacle for some roundish object, along with a bright orange gemstone and a sheet of instructions for casting the visitation spell, which has the power to bring one person back from the dead for a single day. Obviously, a bunch of Disney nerds like us could only pick one person to use a spell on. Let's get the week's travel news out of the way so we can spend a day with Uncle Walt. But first, we need to welcome our guest to the studio. Zach is an expert travel planner with Key to Go Travel. And and he's also our resident Disney history expert. Zach, if you're a character in an adventure movie or comic book or one of those old-fashioned books without pictures, what type of character would you be? For example, I like to think that I'm a mix of Indiana Jones and Carl Fredrickson from Up. Heather would be traveling time and space in the TARDIS, and Jess and Jeff are both indoor kids turned reluctant adventurers who rise to the occasion when the action starts. Yeah, they do. <laughs> rise. <laughs> I like to think that I'm a, a Winnie the Pooh adventurer. Always, Aww, always ready to it. go, but always looking for a smack roll of honey. Oh, along the way. a little bit of a bother. Yes, <laughs> never is. wearing. Yes, exactly. And you never wear pants to an adventure. <laughs> oh, no, I'm wearing key. pants today. Oh, yay! You're not out here shirt packing. <laughs> <laughs> There's something about that phrase. It just. <laughs> I think that's why it's there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh boy. Well, that was good. <laughs> Well, let's let's do some news. The news this week is brought to you by Key to the World Travel. Key to the World Travel is a full-service travel agency specializing in theme parks, cruising, and destinations around the world. Head to www.keytotheworldtravel.com for more details and a no-obligation quote on the vacation of a lifetime. Jess, something special is brewing in Japan. Yes, that's right. Um, we have finally um, news about the opening of Universal Studios Japan's Super Nintendo World. Woohoo! Yeah, so it's going to be opening on February 4th, 2021. Ooh, and not that far off. Yeah, no, like they were actually, I think they were saying originally like in the spring or something like that, yeah. like not even maybe like a month ago. So that's pretty quick. Um, and with that news uh, comes news about three of the attractions that you can do there. So the main sort of e-ticket attraction is going to be Mario Kart Koopa's Challenge. And that's the one that we got some footage uh some images of earlier this year um that's going to be uh located inside bowser's castle which looks really awesome um and it's so cool yeah it's a four-person ride vehicle and then you have augmented reality goggles that are built into a mario hat Mm. which looks kind of silly but oh yes it it looks pretty awesome because they don't like go like right on your thing like a 3d glasses they sort of hang down like a visor from the hat That's yeah be better it's like a portable screen that sort of goes right in front of your face so uh and then there's also yoshi's adventure which is a, a five minute ride following captain toad on a treasure hunting adventure as he seeks the golden egg and this one looks <laughs> sort of a, whatever the hell that means. Right. yeah you know what i played a lot of mario games and i was just like i don't know what that is yeah, you never know what's going on <laughs> yeah I, you get aboard a, a, a yoshi there's a bunch of multicolored yoshis and it looks like a an all ages type of ride uh that goes sort of around the land and gives you what looks like to be some pretty awesome views of the the whole area and then uh, finally what um is going to be basically used with the sort of magic bands that they 
released footage of earlier this year. Uh, it's going to be the Power Up Band Key Challenge, and it's basically a scavenger hunt. Okay. Yeah, it's a scavenger hunt throughout the land um, where you'll collect virtual keys that unlock experiences, and you'll need to purchase one of their special Power Up Bands to participate in these hold up you're gonna have to buy stuff in here yeah in a theme park i know right at a theme park (laughs) yeah i know i think the original plan was to give them all away but yeah they realize they have to make tons of money off of this which they will special time so we gotta make money where we can (laughs) that's true um but yeah so february 4th uh and then hopefully maybe sometime in my son's lifetime we might see this over here at Mm. (laughs) epic universe 2526. That's how I felt when they announced Star Wars. And I was like, my son will be graduated from college by the time it opens. And it actually made it before he graduated high school. So that's true. I think for Ash to have this in the U.S., he'll, yeah. he'll be like 13 years old when yeah. it's here. And you know what? We'll still love it. Yep, yeah. It'll still be awesome. Yeah, I can't wait. And I love it. it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a story that I picked because I know our special guest, Zach, loves Christmas and he especially Disney Christmas things. And I'm pretty sure some of the other members of the society are fans of cookies. So uh, yeah. the, the the Disney Parks blog just released a compendium of Christmas cookie recipes from oh. the parks around the world. And Yes. Apparently, December 4th was National Cookie Day. You know, there's a day for for everything, right? So that was when they put this out. And just scrolling through it, there's some great cookie recipes on here. Um, the, if you would like the recipe for Jack Jack's Cookie Num Nums. Mm, those are good. Find that here, right? Those are so good. Disneyland Paris, at first I was into it. They released a classic chocolate chip cookie recipe, but then I was reading through it and they put dried fruit and some other weird stuff yeah. in it. So it turns sort of into like a fruitcake. Fruit cake. Yeah, <laughs> which I guess that's a holiday classic, but ew. Well, no, thank you. No. Disneyland Resort was a classic shortbread cookie recipe. That's They're known for their delicious. shortbread. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Epcot, uh, have you guys seen the new the new Spaceship Earth sugar cookie that they put out this year for the Festival of the Holidays? They shared the recipe for that. It's filled with salted caramel ganache. Sounds so delicious. And it's shaped like Spaceship Earth. That's fun. Animal Kingdom, there's a recipe for a pumpkin cookie with ice cream in the middle. Sounds kind of good. Um... The one that you might want to that might you might need to be a a more accomplished baker to try is the Bell's Enchanted Christmas Tree, which is basically a 3D. It's all almond macarons of various sizes stacked into a Christmas tree, kind of like that uh, French profiterole thing that that the French do for weddings. Yeah, that are all the little individual things stacked together but it looks pretty cool all in all there's 10 recipes that they shared and then there's some links to all of the specialty snacks that have come out for the holidays this year for festival of the holidays and around the walt disney world resort so you can check it out on the disney parks blog i want a recipe for that yule log that they have at magic kingdom right now that was that was the first Mm. treat i have had in a while that actually tasted good it's really good. Yeah, I mean, I actually Those are I had, tricky to make. Have you ever tried to make a Yule log? Yeah, they're they're it's it's a whole lot of what work. The like, hell is a Yule log? <laughs> so it's, it's a basically giant uh, you make a it's sponge cake, cake on a flat pan so that it's maybe a half inch an inch thick, and uh, then you put some kind of filling in it. Oh, you um, roll it, and then yeah. you roll it, and then oh, you yeah. frost it with brown frosting so it looks like a log. <laughs> I'm not sure why eating a piece of wood is a holiday treat, but doesn't I'm sure it, because it, I'm sure it goes that, back so. to a time when all we had was like logs. It's like, Merry Christmas, I brought you a log. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's fun for a girl or a boy. <laughs> like, wow. You know what would be great is if we could eat this. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Santa, can I get a portion of a tree for Christmas this year? Yeah, they have one at at the Festival of the Holidays. France always does one because that's the traditional. But a Yule log, like from the days of yore, wasn't 
really this cake, was it? I always thought it was some sort of crap you put on your fire. Was that I, really what it I has always been? No yeah, 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 yeah. You burn I, a log, and I think you save yeah. part of it for the next year to start your next Yule fire or some nonsense like that. Yeah. So it's like a sourdough starter. I'll ask my brother yeah. about Yule. I bet he yeah. could I bet he could share that with you. <laughs> I'm disappointed they didn't bring the animal poop cookies back. For yeah. animal poop. Yeah, they could have put they could have Yeah, oh, they got a lot of trouble for that. I forgot about those. Like they pooped yeah. out candy yeah, canes or scat something. Cookies. Yeah. Scat cookies. Whose idea was that? <laughs> they were good. Products. They were really good. Bob they were time. good. That's true. That's <laughs> <laughs> his idea. All the <laughs> shitty ideas are his. <laughs> Yeah. Your, what is your favorite Christmas treat to eat from the Walt Disney World Resort or Disneyland, Zach? I don't know. I really do like those candy canes from Disneyland. Yes. I, I was going to say, what is it? One of us who got one of those. Yes. Yeah. People go nuts for those, man. Well, not this year. They're not. Are we talking just no. holiday treats? Yeah. Well, I was thinking holidays. I, I love that. Uh, if this thing, if that cookie you're talking about is holiday, the, the like pumpkin bread with ice cream in the middle, that thing's mm-hmm. good. I've yes. had that. Isn't there, they used to have a gingerbread one. At, yeah, that was uh, at the thing at Hollywood Studios that they closed. Yes. It was right mm-hmm. next to Brown Derby, whatever that little bit. Oh, store. the carrot cake oh, cookie yeah. was there that too. Cake, oh, yeah. There was one at Epcot that was. I think Epcot might have been the gingerbread and, one. Ice cream sandwich. Yeah, it was gingerbread mm. cookie with a. Uh, Peppermint ice cream. Oh, yum. Anything but the gingerbread shingles from the Grand Floridian. I got one of those last no. year. They're, they're not they're, good. And I like gingerbread. No. Those were not good. I got a shot. I can no longer get shingles. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Good to know. <laughs> well, guys, we got a message from a listener. Uh, so we have a listener. So exciting. Yeah, and- I thought our only know? listener was our special guest today. Yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised the prison let the letter out. That's nice, though. <laughs> we now have proof of at least one more listener. Uh, if you want to get uh, get a message out to us, you can uh, head on over to www.goldkeyadventures.com. And there's a contact link on there that you can send us a note. But uh, Brad sent us a message. He said, I thought you guys would enjoy this article. Aaron and I were most impressed by the breakfast beverage from Finland in number three. <laughs> yes. This will now be part of my daily morning routine, whether my boss likes it or not. I uh, cracked up when I read that one, and I think I need to try it. <laughs> yeah, that looks yeah. really good. A lot of the treats on here, this is a BuzzFeed article mm-hmm. about the best treats from different countries. So the one from Finland is you take a coffee mug and you put a coin in the bottom. And you fill it with coffee until you can't see the coin. But then you take vodka and you keep adding vodka until you can see the coin again. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's just a really game good. alcoholics play. That's this, not is a, a drink. this is a breakfast treat. And that breakfast I of make vodka from what they do. <laughs> a lot of the a lot of the stuff on the list though, I was kind of surprised. It, it kind of seemed like it was more like. Some of it just seems so obvious, like like, like eating this. tacos in Mexico, right? Or like, yeah. like pierogies in. in it seems in almost Poland. racist. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> allegedly, this is allegedly this is a list of things that people from these countries are telling you you have to try ah. when you go uh, to the country. Um, I was wondering if you guys can think of any specialties that you would recommend, either from. Uh, Either from countries you visited or maybe mm-hmm. the state where you live. Well, I spent last week in Jamaica and I stuffed myself on Jamaican traditional Jamaican meat patties, which I'd heard of these before. And when they, you know, they just call it a patty. So I was thinking it was just going to be like a little hamburger. Like, yeah, slap a like piece a, of meat like in your a, hand. Yeah, like a <laughs> piece of jerk chicken. But it's actually a little meat pie and they're yeah. delightful. They're so good. Those things are are like a, like an empanada kind of thing. Yeah, kind of like that. Or um, here in Michigan, in the UP, we, they call them pasties. Yeah, it's and a British it's thing too. A little, yeah, it's basically a little pastry pocket stuffed with delicious meats and other various things. Yeah, they're so. Well, good. I was noticing on the BuzzFeed list that we're talking about for Germany, they had bread. Yes, uh, I mean that's <laughs> yeah. just super obvious. But we discovered one. Uh, Heather like was on schnitzel. this trip with our family and her family. 
my family and her family it was uh, spaghetti ice cream. Apparently, this is a German treat delicacy. I had never heard of this, nor had my wife, who grew up there. But it's a newer thing. It's all the rage in Germany where they use a noodle press. Or like it's almost like the Play-Doh hairdresser thing to press ice cream into <laughs> yeah, I noodle think it's, shape. Um, potato ricer. Always, yeah, yeah, we called it a potato ricer. Yeah, yeah. So it it takes the super frozen ice cream, they run it through that thing, so it's like ice cream noodles, and then the top is uh, strawberry compote kind of a thing, hot yummy strawberry stuff, mm-hmm. and then they top that with whipped cream that they, and uh, white chocolate that they shave like the Parmesan Shavings. cheese on the spaghetti. Mm-hmm. It is. <laughs> Oh, good. I ate it's my way to delicious that. delicious, and it looks like, it really does look like spaghetti. It's it's so great. Hmm. That sounds better than what I thought it was, which was just ice cream on spaghetti. <laughs> yeah, or <laughs> spaghetti flavored ice cream yeah. also. When they mentioned, <laughs> well, it was on an Adventures by Disney trip, and they said, tomorrow night we're going to have the German del- delicacy spaghetti ice cream. I was like, A, that's Italian, and B, gross. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> no. But it was, it was awesome. It was really good. I might be from America, but even I know. <laughs> yeah, Ice like, cream what? on spaghetti ain't good. I didn't get down to Scotland, but I'm assuming it's haggis. No. Yeah. It's, um, I, I just want to su- talk about... Even the Scottish don't want it. I, right? I want to just talk about for a minute the, the first entry, which is this cup of hot brown, which is hot chocolate with cheese in it. Yeah. Oh, that looks, yeah. That thing looks Ugh. like a science experiment. I don't want that. And that does not make sense. See, it's Columbia, this is why you Columbia, don't do cocaine. Yeah. This is no. <laughs> Santa Fareño, hot chocolate with melted cheese for added creaminess. No. It doesn't even look mm-hmm. like a, like a cream cheese or, a, or something like that. It looks like mozzarella. It's like mozzarella. <laughs> yeah. And it's photographed yeah. in a dirty mug. Like, come on, y'all. <laughs> You're yeah. not selling it. <laughs> Number not 12 good. is the Netherlands with the Stroop waffle. Oh, oh Stroop waffles. waffles. Yes, yeah, those a lot are of good. those when we were over there on the when I was, trip. When I was younger, I worked in a specialty grocery store and discovered those and spent like one whole paycheck once on Stroop waffles. <laughs> <laughs> we can get those right here in the West Michigan. We've got lots of Dutch. You can make them at the Dutch Village Amusement Park. Yes. Yeah. Mm. If you scroll down to number 22, Argentina, the Milanesa, you take a steak and you butterfly it, and then you roll up some ham and cheese in the middle, and then you deep fry that, and you top it with tomato sauce, apparently. As one just, does. Amazing. It's a, it's a steak with this melty, gooey cheese and ham Stuffed inside. deep and... fried steak. Yum. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, sounds like fair I'll food. I'll try it. I will <laughs> yeah. holler at that. Iceland is a basically <laughs> cottage cheese. Ugh. Oh, yeah, you know what? No. Have you ever tried that? It's yogurt, but it's no. weird. It's even thicker than Greek yogurt. And Ew. It's no. 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 no, no, Greek get yogurt is disgusting. Too viscous. <laughs> I love the Greek people. <laughs> yes. Don't get me wrong, listener. <laughs> but your viscous yogurt is garbage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, the, 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 that Iceland, it's, I've, I've tried it before. It's not, it's not bad. Well, at least they didn't mind. put the fermented shark on there as the thing you should try. <laughs> mm. Yeah. I like my shark fresh. Personally. Australia is Vegemite. Also, no thank you. Ooh, well, it just yeah, tastes like I mean, a salt lake. To... Have you ever tried Vegemite? Yeah. Kind of like caviar ish. Like I can't just really stand the salty. way it smells. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. It smells like a compost heap. Yes. Yeah. yeah most and of these they, are pretty good, Bob. They... Although I was surprised to see baklava under Bulgaria. Yeah. Wasn't I thought that, that was thing? Greek. Yeah. I think it's kind of. The whole general. The whole region. Yeah. I don't know. Who knows? I also don't know where Bulgaria is. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, I, 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 don't enough. quote me on this. I think it's one of that kind of just general lump of what we call the Baltics over yeah. there. It's not I, quite the Middle East. It's not quite Europe. It's kind of. Yeah. I got to ask, is the, is the entry from Belgium, was this a joke? Is it a waffle? <laughs> It is a waffle. <laughs> really? Go with what you know. I mean, I mean, Canada has yes. poutine, so. Mm, yeah. I do love some poutine. poutine. Canada good, should just be a hunk of moose. <laughs> <laughs> hunk of moose and beaver. Moose. Yeah. <laughs> that was my Lots nickname of, in high school. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of good stuff. It's making me hungry. Yeah, we'll put that link up on the page and you guys can uh, tell us what specialties from your state or country you recommend we check out. And up next, Jess has a story about uh, 
fancy new way to get around Florida. Yeah. So the Brightline high speed rail is uh, expanding and uh, we now know that it's coming. Uh, it's going to have a station coming to Disney Springs in the future. Um, so, yeah, this is uh, going to be basically uh, be uh, in about two to three years. And uh, after the scheduled 2022 completion of the expansion of the line, that's going to go from West Palm Beach to Orlando International Airport. Um, mm. So this is going to be like a very fast way to basically get from Miami to Orlando. Um, the station is going to have a lobby on the ground level, passenger facilities, and then an upper level train platform. And we don't know the exact location yet, but um, they're saying that when it's completed, it's going to take about three hours to get from my, uh, Miami to Orlando. Which And then you'd be able to take the train from MCO to... Disney Springs? Disney Springs. I think that's yeah, that's what ah, the big cool. the big thing and and I wouldn't be surprised if that when that finally opens and it's running and and fully established that they get rid of the Magical Express bus system and just switch to that. some I mean yeah. they've already got to so deal with them so they're going to have to put a transportation <laughs> hub in at Disney Springs somewhere mm-hmm. yeah. which is good because I was hoping they'd find a way to get more traffic around that general area. Yeah. 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 It's, it's <laughs> so no, it just needs it doesn't traffic right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, the companies, I mean, always working on ways to like lower their their carbon footprint and transportation is a big deal for them that they've been. I mean, the Skyliner being a yeah, sort of a I big step in that the direction. Skyliner everywhere. Uh, all it's to, all rumored to be the plans eventually. The yeah, I would yeah. love that. Yeah, that would be so well, nice. The other exciting thing about that train is I think they're going to, it's going to extend over to Tampa also, which mm-hmm. means you'll be able to get over to Snowcat Ridge uh, to do your your sledding in Florida. Yeah, right. <laughs> to get yeah. your winter sports in on your Disney trip. That is weird. I don't know that I would. I'm clamoring for a way to get from the airport to the shopping mall at Disney. I don't yeah. know <laughs> why that would be. I don't know. I think what, they're just using the game there. I think they just they I know I mean they want to have a, a quick way to get to the resort and if they can siphon you through a gift shop that's obviously going to mm-hmm. happen oh, so why not siphon you through a giant gift mall you know yeah, yeah. that's good you're probably going to have to walk like the station will be at one end of Disney Springs yeah, and then the buses the to the there. hotels are going to be <laughs> all the way at the other behind a gift shop you know so. yeah I wonder if they'll reinstate that whole um, maybe it'll be down on that end where the buses used to drop off where you pick up a minivans also now is a used to yeah pick you mm-hmm. up down by the marketplace mm-hmm. yeah I, I on my last trip i realized that yeah the, that uber drop-off point they now make you walk this entire sort of roundabout way to get to the the temperature check area so mm-hmm. be prepared for that if you're taking an uber to disney springs yeah it takes a minute yeah choo choo <laughs> what <laughs> Is it, Heather's got, uh, it sounds like she's going to be kicking off a new political campaign. Yes, Bob Iger for president, you guys. Hmm. Hey. President of bad wigs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. I, I came across this article that was the an interview with, with Iger where he admitted that he had very seriously considered running for president this year. And may indeed consider it again in the future, but he also said he was willing to accept a position in the Biden administration so uh, he can whip the country into shape much like he did the Walt Disney Company. I don't I was wondering what you guys thought of that. I'm looking forward to more IP in my daily American life. Yeah, so right? I think yeah. when you're the <laughs> almost head of a company that's just laying off a hundred plus thousand people maybe don't run for president right now and maybe that's why he decided well he did say that you know he's he's he really he had just retired and handed the reins wow. over when all of this went down and he kind of ended up not really retiring he stepped back in and has been helping out so yeah that that makes sense why it really wasn't a good time now but i'd always heard those rumors floating around but Mm -hmm. this was he he said yeah absolutely i've thought about it and it's it's interesting because it's another businessman you know somebody who doesn't have really any political experience but so how that worked out for us last time? We it didn't really work out for us last time, but then yes, again, but Bob Iger's a time. successful business. Yes, that's, that's what I was true. just about to say. Yeah. 
is uh, he actually did great things at the Walt Disney Company. So having seen him speak a few times, I mean, he's Mm -hmm. super charismatic and he really is. And he uh, until I actually saw him speak, I was like, oh, what's the big deal with this guy? And he's just captivating when he talks. He really is. Sadly, uh, we were at the first D23 we went to. He spoke. And then moments later, it was him and then Oprah. And then, I mean, all these amazing speakers. And then Bob Chapek, bless his heart, had to come out. And he just looks like a thumb out there trying to (laughs) keep the crowd entertained. (laughs) Yeah. He's he's so more. Yeah, I'm sure he's good at what he does. And he's probably a brilliant guy, but he is not a charismatic speaker at all. I, I just finished reading Bob Iger's book. And he actually does have a lot of experience working with heads of state because oh, he yeah. worked on, you know, getting Shanghai Disneyland off the ground. And that was a, that's a lot of working with some heads of state and bureaucracy and some really. And one of the most difficult companies, uh, countries to do yeah, business. Absolutely. And it was very successful. So I don't know, kind of kind of an interesting idea, I thought. And, and, I'd give it another look. Maybe he'll be a third party option someday. Could be. Those are viable. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to our new political podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the gold key super pack. There we go. There it is. Yes. Don't throw your vote away. <laughs> Lesser of two evils. <laughs> well, guys, um, actually, I'm calling an audible on what I put on the uh, on the production outline here, because I realized that I didn't come up with an international Christmas. Uh, oh, right. Yeah. Guys. Something so, to add to KFC and <laughs> Donald Duck. Yeah, uh, we're we're actually going to head over to Europe this week and we're going to talk about Christmas in Wales. Hmm. Hey, I'm, <laughs> I'm half Welsh. Hey, let me out of here. Um, uh, you guys have heard of, of the tradition of wassailing. Yes, absolutely. Oh, yes. When I'm always waffle. going, here we go, a wassailing. Yes. I mean, you could make it yourself, but I think it's more fun to do it the traditional way where you go around to people's house and beg for booze, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, in Wales, they take a, they, they put a special spin on this tradition. And I'm going to share my screen in a second with you. But at first, I need to pronounce this Welsh word, Uh-oh. which is probably the most, the most difficult of all of these Guys, there's a lot of consonants. Here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Have you noticed right. that? The Welsh uh, and the Irish, uh, the, the, the Gaelic is, language is, yeah. It's a chewy language. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, so this <laughs> this tradition from Wales is called Mari Lwyd. Lwyd? 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 It's L-W-Y-D. We're going to need that on a loop, Dan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to set that as my name ringtone. <laughs> 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 and the headline here from Alice Obscura says, in Wales, midwinter is the right time to look a gift horse in its gaping skull mouth. Oh, my. Zach, well, this, is a tr- this is your trigger warning yeah. right now, Zach, because I'm about to share my screen. Uh-oh. Wait, how do I do that? <laughs> I'm a professional. <laughs> my screen looks different. Why can't I figure it out now? I'm a podcaster. Oh, <laughs> I know Zoom <laughs> updated and everything's different. Yeah. Okay. I didn't update mine. I didn't follow the rules. I didn't either. This don't worry. I just send you a don't worry, Dan. You'll edit this out later. <laughs> <laughs> I probably won't. Dan, remember to edit it. Anyway, I'm just going to send you guys a link in the chat to this page, and you can open it up in your own browser. All right. And I'll just wait for your reactions to see that you've got it. Atlas Obscure. Horse <laughs> skull waffle. <laughs> Ew, what? <laughs> oh. So, so huh. in Wales in midwinter, <laughs> nice. it's a tradition. At least they've festively decorated the horse skull with ribbons and Christmas yeah, ornaments. Yeah, and, and, ribbons and yeah. Bells. Instead of a googly eye, it's an ornament <laughs> stuck in his eye hole. Huh. Yeah. Uh, so, it's, so it says, uh, around Christmas and New Year's Eve, Welsh families might find themselves challenged by a decorated horse or similar animal skull waiting for them on their doorstep. Adorned in colorful ribbons and bells, the equine image of death has an especially ghostly appearance thanks to the white sheet draped over the person carrying it. Uh, so, Wait, so, so it's okay to leave work horse heads on people's doorsteps is what you're no, telling me. No, you don't leave it. You carry it around with you. This is you, you wear it. Uh, so what you do is you, you get your friends <laughs> together. Accessory. You get your friends together and you decorate the horse skull and you put it on a stick. And then you parade through town 
knocking on strangers' doors and singing Christmas songs at them until they give you wassail. I gotta say, if I'm new to an area and <clears throat> this knocks on my door, I'm I'm not gonna be happy. <laughs> If you don't have a horse skull, you can use a cow skull <laughs> and beg for P- PBR. What do you do yeah. if you don't have wassail? How do you get them to go away? Ooh, yeah, if you have I no booze, you have to sacrifice yeah. a child to the horse skull. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah. No, I got weird. Well, that took a turn <laughs> <laughs> as usual. Huh? Yeah. So that looks fun and terrifying. Apparently, it yep. could happen any time of year. Also, it's it's most uh, associated with Christmas, but they do it at Halloween and May Day. Also, you can so. just parade around town with a horse skull on your head anytime you run out of yeah. vodka. <laughs> exactly. Hey, yeah. I don't have any booze. I'm going to go get ask the horse the skull for some. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get out the skull. Um, a sheep, a horse skull. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'll put the link to the article up so you guys can all have nightmares. Also, this also oh, has are delightful. <laughs> this also has uh, the original recipe f- recipe for wassail. If you're interested in making the authentic original version, oh sure, uh, it was I'm originally good. a sugared and spiced drink of mulled ale mixed with curdled cream, roasted apples, <gasps> oh, and eggs. No, yeah, so I'm that out. sounds tasty. <laughs> Don't think, curdle stuff. I think I'm going to stick with my recipe of apple cider and rum. And we live in the future, people. Life. We ain't got to drink that crap anymore. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Curdled cream. Dude, Ugh, get yourself a white claw and move on with your life. Putting some cottage cheese in your <laughs> beverage? Flavored Gross. White claw. <laughs> if I wanted curdled cream I, in my drink, I'd drink a cement mixer like an adult. Ugh. Gross. <sighs> well, if that wasn't weird enough, it's time for... Japan is weird. Yes, so it's time for another uh, edition of Japan is weird. And uh, today, I'm going to take you guys to something. And the first rule of it is is you can't talk about it. So be prepared for that. Today, we're going to take a step into Spider Fight Club. (laughs) So this is uh, in uh, Ara City. Uh, The citizens, ranging from elementary school children to elders, buy, capture, or rear female uh, Argiope Amiona. I know I'm not pronouncing that right. Spiders. And uh, then after they've Uh. raised these spiders, uh, they register them for the Kajiki Town Spider Battle Tournament, which is held annually on the third Sunday in June every year. Now... The spider battles apparently happen all over the world, but most of them are discouraged by the government. So this is actually like considered like a, a cultural thing that they they protect and and sanction. So it's set up like a tournament and they have spiders advancing as they win through individual fights. Um, and usually it's about nearly 200 spiders competing every year. Um, so how it works is one spider stands on the end of a horizontal wooden pole and uh, the judge places her opponent a bit farther down on the other side of the pole. Um, then basically holds his hand in between them to keep them apart from each other and pulls it away. And they go at each other um, and yeah, a spider can. Yeah. yeah, well, that's that's spider fights after dark. But, you know, um, <clears throat> now a spider can win a fight in three ways. They can bite their opponent on the abdomen, wrap the abdomen of the opponent in thread or knock the uh, opponent off the, the pole and cut their line so that they tumble to the to the mat. And so they but the, that. Yeah, the majority of the fights are over in 10 seconds or less. It's like super fast and really brutal. They're like really big, ugly, colorful spiders. Um, But if if your if your spider's not a fighter, there's something else that your spider can do at the at the spider fight tournaments, because there are also beauty pageant portions of the program. (laughs) So uh, in this section, uh, spiders can get extra points on their (laughs) roster if um, as they're judged on beauty color patterning and how well proportioned their figures are <laughs> little dresses they can put little dresses on them oh, oh they wear yes, little bikinis <laughs> little high heel shoes and then they do little like baton routines and talent. Saying, talent i believe the children are the future and all that you know um <laughs> and uh weird 
And then there's other there's other spider related activities that you can get into while you're there. Uh, you sure. can admire paintings and drawings of spiders created by school children, which is creepy in itself. Uh, you can have your photo taken as a spider judge in a your face here cut out style <laughs> thing like at the fair um, you can buy snacks emblazoned with the spider battle logo and learn about the <laughs> ecological importance of spiders or you can enter a raffle and win like spider pajamas and things like that uh, you know oh. it's japan so they they go all out for it um but yeah so hopefully by next june everything will be back to normal and we can all go watch a spider cage battle let's go i'm bringing that to america spider cage some, your fight. picture There's taken with hello who... kitty dressed as a spider Yes. yes. They go out of There's their some... way to make sure that the spiders are not like severely like hurt. So it's they 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 show a lot of respect to the to the hum- spider battle. How do you do they keep have an the spiders of, uh... from killing each other? Like your hand. You tell them to stop. <laughs> stop it right now. I think you it's apologize. called apologize. For me, if I'm the the referee in this, I usually use a stray flip flop. <laughs> just, yeah, that usually takes it. care of Kill your friend. That's how I won all my spider battles. So I'm just saying <laughs> you win them all by killing your opponent. Yeah. And they don't in the beauty pageant. They do not judge the spider on penis size. So I know oh. that was your point we were thinking, but yeah, because <laughs> they're all women. Come on, y'all. Oh, oh, that's why. No dicks. No. How do they? <laughs> Yeah, how do you know the difference between the a male and a female I'll take my, spider? I'll take my answer off air. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the female ones are always bossing the male ones around. Uh, oh, uh. boy. <laughs> Please direct all comments to... The male spider's legs are re- spread out really far for no good reason. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> spider That's man it. spreading. Spider spreading. <laughs> That's what Mary Jane calls Peter Parker in the evening. <laughs> I get that reference. Get that note. <laughs> Stick around because after the commercial break, we're celebrating Walt Disney's birthday by imagining what we'd do if we had just one day to show him what's been created in his name over the past 54 years. When it comes to planning your next adventure, knowledge and preparation are always key. That's why a call to your key to the world travel vacation planner should always be at the top of your to-do list when you feel the urge to venture forth and explore the world. Key to the World Travel is an authorized Disney vacation planner specializing in travel to Disney theme parks around the world, as well as Disney Cruise Line, Alani, and Adventures by Disney. With over 450 travel advisors who share a deep love for Disney destinations, Key to the World Travel has a wealth of knowledge and passion to help you experience all the magic with none of the work. Wherever your wanderlust is driving you, Key to the World Travel is a full-service travel agency with the expertise to get you where you want to go. So whether you're headed to Universal Studios, Hawaii, Europe, or somewhere a little farther off the beaten track, your first step should always be to visit www.keytotheworldtravel.com for a no-obligation quote. Their expert travel planners are standing by to help you with every detail of your perfect vacation. That's www.keytotheworldtravel.com or at Key to the World Travel on Facebook. Key to the World Travel, your key to a magical vacation. We've brought the wizard's staff down to the study, installed the phoenix gem in the receptacle, and recited the incantation of the visitation spell. A vortex of power swirls around the room, lifting up books and papers and artifacts. When the power subsides and the dust settles, standing in front of us is Walt Disney himself. And he's all in one piece, amazingly. He's only here with us for one whole day, so let's get a move on and make the most of our day with Walt. Um, Got a pickled cigarette. That's what I was just about to say. I would ask him first to put out his pickled cigarette. <laughs> first order of business. Uh, yeah, to celebrate Walt's, Walt Disney's birthday, which was, as we're recording, yesterday, December the 5th, uh, I thought it would be fun to look back on everything that the company has accomplished since he left us back in 1966 and imagine what he'd think of everything that's, that's been done. Um, the challenge for you guys is we only have one day to show him all the best things that that they've created, so we have to choose carefully. Can we we transport through space? That's what I was just going to say. Do we have some kind of uh, Star Trek-style transporter so that we can go all around the globe in one day? It was invented by an Imagineer. 
Yeah. Yes, just yeah. much perfect. much like our much like the perfect Disney day that we drafted a couple weeks ago. Uh, time and space are no are no All right. object. Perfect. We can travel anywhere. Um, I'll go get so, my TARDIS. Firstly, I would ask him, what's the deal with that crappy chili he's so proud of? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, your chili sucks, Dude, Walt. lay off the cinnamon, bro. Yeah. <laughs> and add some of... other spices. Yeah. He's a man of simple tastes. <laughs> yeah. Um, for each of the following topics, I've asked the society members to think of uh, the one and only very best thing that they would like to share with Walt to try to impress him or amuse him or show him how well the people he trusted with his creations have carried on his vision. Uh, so let's start with the theme parks. What one park would you uh, take Walt to see and why? Let's start with our special guest, Zach. Well, um, I, I, I wanted to go with Animal Kingdom. Um, I know that's not everyone's favorite park, but I, I kept thinking back of, of the uh, True Life Adventure documentaries. Yes, absolutely. And... Uh, and uh, so Animal Kingdom just seemed to be, I, and also I just, the, the look of it, it feels so mm-hmm. encompassing. Um, I just felt like that would be the one that I feel like uh, Walt would uh, be most, I'm not necessarily proud of, but would. would yeah, like, he would love it. Yeah. I think he would love it. Yeah. Because he seemed to really love animals and safari and nature. And, and, and nature. there's a lot of storytelling going on there that's subtle and not. He's also big yeah, into adventure, and, and I feel like Animal Kingdom mm-hmm. represents adventure quite a bit. It's, so. it's sort of like the Jungle Cruise on a giant mm-hmm. theme park scale. And we know he loved the Jungle Cruise. That's a great idea. And there's some really cool technology in that park, too. That, mm-hmm. that is a good place to show him some of that. I think Kilimanjaro Safari. the Broken Yeti. Mm-hmm. The Broken Yeti. <laughs> <laughs> He'd be like, what's the deal with the disco lighting yeah, but- on this yeah. Yeah. Maybe, Put some bubble gum on it. Get it fixed. Fix it. <laughs> uh, Heather, what, where would you take? Uh, well, I the one the park that I thought of was Disneyland Paris, and the reason for that was uh, it sort of was the stepping stone of a Disney park going elsewhere in the world. It's global, I guess. Global, mm-hmm. yeah. And I also think that it's such a beautiful park that it. The Disneyland park there reminds me a lot of Disneyland here, but it, they really did a great job taking on all the aspects of the European culture. And it's so, so pretty. And I know Walt liked Europe. And mm-hmm. I, I just think that that would be something cool to show him that, look, your your little vision is now global. And yeah. Um, and in the park, that park is is undergoing a lot of changes and all for the better, I think. Yeah, I think as long as you don't walk him across the street to the uh, Disney the studios. studios. <laughs> yeah. He would wonder, well, with, where does that's the park there. begin? Yeah. <laughs> but from the minute you walk into that park through the that beautiful pink beautiful hotel, hotel and and the castle is just gorgeous and it has a dragon underneath. I think it would be cool to walk down that main street with Walt. That castle is really the prettiest. It's so is. The way it's built into it's the gorgeous. hillside there. Or pretend to be yeah. built into the pretend hillside. <laughs> yeah. It's super what? cool, though. It's not real? What? Yeah, it's not real. Weird. How about you, Jess? Um, I, you know, I, I would have definitely said Animal Kingdom as well, mainly for the same reason Zach said. But I would, I would also say, strangely enough, Hollywood Studios right now. Because yeah. mainly, like, you know, Walt had a, a real big personal drive to keep the company ever changing and sort of adapting and mm, and moving with the point. times. And there's really I, I can't think of a better example of that other than California Adventure of a park that started out one way and has since then completely changed and mm-hmm. is now starting to, like, debut sort of the new cutting edge of of what disney's doing with theme parks so mm-hmm. you know it's it's right now it may not be the best park and it may be sort of a half day park still with the experiences that they have but i feel like they've got a bigger plan for it and probably in mm-hmm. five to ten years it's going to look completely different than it does right now yeah. and it's you know and it's going to be with half day it has really great attractions yeah, and that's the thing. If you if you enjoy theming and attractions, you can easily spend a whole day there. It's just you know mm-hmm. people that just want to run and gun the rides. Yeah. It definitely 
And once and two favorite rides on property are right across the street from mm-hmm. each other at yeah. that park. And once COVID is is under control and we can get the shows back, I think those are a really key yeah. part of that park. And that sort of starts stretching it into more than just a half day destination. Yeah, definitely. We can get all the shows back. Except those <laughs> gigantic Beauty and the Beast costumes. <laughs> the big foam ones, yeah. Yeah. That's I had fair. originally thought I was going to show him Shanghai because of some of the reasons that we've discussed here, the amazing technology as well as just the global aspect. I think he'd mm-hmm. have his mind blown to know that we're that his vision is all in Asia mm-hmm. and everywhere in the world. But then as we're talking, I just thought, well, he needs to see Magic Kingdom because he died before it was open. Yeah. Oh, so, that's just such to a good see point. his face as you walk, mm-hmm. like my own son's face when I took him to Magic Kingdom for the first time. If mm-hmm. he could round that corner and see the scale of Cinderella Castle, oh, yeah, he planned but never got to see that would be yeah. amazing. Yeah, that's a really good point. I hadn't thought of that. Yeah, I agree. And, and I actually Walt Disney World, yeah, yeah, you know, yep. Yeah. And I was going to say, uh, Shanghai for kind of similar reasons, but I think because it's the newest version of his Disneyland is mm-hmm. original Magic Kingdom. Yeah. On so, an incredibly epic scale. Yes. Right, exactly. So he can see, you know, and especially since there's so many of the attractions that are, um, you know, a, an evolution of ones that he worked on mm-hmm. for his for Yeah, his like park, Pirates of know? the Caribbean. That would and blow it's somebody's exactly. mind if they hadn't seen technology since the yeah. late 60s. <laughs> <and 90s. laughs> what? Yeah. If he wasn't dead before. Yeah. <laughs> <Now>. <laughs> I'm dead I wouldn't waste my one day with Walt on it, but what do you guys think he would think of Epcot? No. <laughs> right? What are these walls? Why, yeah. why are my yeah, quotes yeah. all over these walls? What is this what? about? Where's my city? <laughs> Poor yeah. you guys. Thank yeah. you. I know he'd love the World Showcase yeah. part of it. Yeah, he that's just true. All that. And, and I think there's individual pieces of Epcot that he would like, but I wouldn't tell him it's yeah. Epcot. I'd say this but is... I think he'd... I think he'd choose some Imagineers ass. Why is that gentleman said. throwing up in the trash can? <laughs> <laughs> can I, can yeah. I throw in a runner-up that I want to yeah. mention to? Uh, I've never yeah. been to it, but I, I would really like to take him to Tokyo Disney Sea, just because yes. I hear all the time that that is the the best Disney mm-hmm. park in the world. Uh, I would like to take him there as well. And I would like, I'd like to, to go take there myself. Me to Tokyo Disney <laughs> City. Yeah. If I get to go there and I get to bring a dead guy with me, it's a win-win. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Weekend at Tokyo City. Dead guys get in free on weekends. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's take it down a little bit more granular. And so the way that the Disney parks are kind of designed, we've got these lands that mm-hmm. are like a, like a chapter, right? So what all encump- what what one single land do you think would be the best place to take Walt for a visit? And should we go in reverse order this time and let Jeff go first? Yeah. Um I think I would show him the new fantasy land at uh Magic Kingdom just because it's what he knew but expanded upon and that whole mm-hmm. story time with Bell and he was all about the story oh, yeah. and I think if he could see yeah. the story time with bell and the, uh, just the deep level of detail on that and that was kind of the first one of these super immersive lands that they went with after getting their butt kicked with harry potter mm-hmm. and i just think the expansion part of what his vision had been originally but expanded would be really cool to let him see that yeah. And it wouldn't confuse him like some of the other newer lands. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> he might wonder why uh, the story of Rapunzel is just a bathroom. But... <laughs> yes. It's a like tale as old as time. Why are yeah. there frying pans with the toilets? I don't get yeah. this. <laughs> <laughs> but like, yeah, some of the newer lands, he'd be like, what even is this? <laughs> yeah. What about you, Jess? Um, I'd probably say Radiator Springs. Um, oh yeah, good one. Because I mean, as I'm not a huge Cars fan, but like, it's it's so immersive. Um, mm-hmm. I, you know what? I I love um Galaxy's Edge, but I find Radiator Springs to be far more immersive and sort of makes you feel like you're really there than 
Galaxy's yeah. Edge does. Because they went with a, a story in places that we all know. Which yes. we've, we've brought this up about Galaxy's Edge before. That yeah. they made something that's Star Wars-ish. Generically Star, right. Star Wars. Wars. Yeah. I think Walt would love that, too, because it is is a studding foot in sort of anywhere that exists. You're going into a cartoon and, mm -hmm. you know. I think he would he would get that and and see why that's so appealing. So yeah, that's what I'd go with. But yeah. except for flows, I would not. <laughs> no, we would not do it to flows. <laughs> not take Walter well flows. Well, well, he might enjoy it though. Now, where are those Rapunzel chili. bathrooms you were talking about? Ah, that's okay. true. <laughs> if that crappy chili was his favorite food. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like this. This food is amazing in the future. If they could get him a Scotch mist and some. Bland food. <laughs> Look at this. I got a I got a milkshake and they put it inside of a trophy. Look at that. It's amazing. Plastic trophy. This is amazing. Can you I'm the manager here at Close. <laughs> I wouldn't brag about that. Where would you take him, Heather? Um I would say um Toy Story Land. And huh. for similar reasons to what Jeff was saying, is that because Walt was a storyteller at the very you know, base of his character. He loved to tell stories. And similar to Radiator Springs, I think Toy Story Land is a great way of telling a story. And it's also a great place where parents and kids can play on mm -hmm. the same level, right? Which was also Walt's thing. You can, you've got the um, Midway Mania and Slinky Dog. And I just love the, the way that that area of Hollywood Studios tells that story. You've shrunk down to the size of a toy, and you're in Andy's backyard, and, and it's, it's hot it's there. Not but... con <laughs> it's not confusing concepts like Star right. Wars or some of the more. Yeah, even if you haven't seen newer. Toy Story, if you haven't seen the movies, you, you can still kind of get it. Yeah, and it's yeah, everybody it's... understands that, like a kid imagining that their toys are real. That that mm -hmm. makes sense. Yeah, so I I think you would think that that was cool, and and that it was a well done storytelling element in that park Zach I, well, I was going to say Cars Land um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Chess took that one uh, I also but I, I, I want to stick with California Adventure and um, I, I would kind of go with Buena Vista Street oh yeah I don't know mm -hmm. I, it's, just, it's got that connection to Walt and it's it's, it's, it's it's interesting because it's like the flip side of Main Street um, so I just mm -hmm. think having that uh, kind of knowing knowing Main Street you know from from I mean and he's Walt Disney, and then kind of seeing the reverse, <laughs> the reverse side of that with with uh, Buena Vista Street, I think would be really yeah. interesting to show him. It doesn't the really have any attractions, and... but it doesn't mm -hmm. have to. And then um, take. But it also shows him how lasting, how lasting an impression his mm -hmm. whole life made on the whole world. Really, why, why else would somebody want to recreate a, the, you know, the era of a of Hollywood where he showed up that because it's, it was so pivotal in, mm -hmm. in the Walt Disney company. It's a nice way to pay homage to Walt without being overtly Walt, which we know that he really wasn't a big fan of. Mm -hmm. So, Why do you think that is Zach? What do I think? What? Why do you think Walt wasn't a big fan of stuff being overtly Walt? Like, do you think himself. do you think he would appreciate that Walt Disney World is called that? I do, do, I know, I do not. I don't even know yeah. how he feel about the the partner statues. Um, oh, interesting. I don't know. I think I wasn't he reluctant to have the. I believe Blaine Gibson was approaching him and asking him to allow him to do that for quite a long time before he passed. And he always turned. Yeah. He said, if you do do it, you've got to make me a little bit taller than I am in real life. Mm -hmm. It would be weird for normal people to want their name on buildings and things. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> for normal folks. <laughs> yeah. Leaders of industry and nations. I mean, it would be weird. Like, I'd just welcome to Jeff Williams Town. It's just that would feel <laughs> yeah, weird. But you'd love it. <laughs> yeah, it's ludicrous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you guys completely changed my mind on what um, on the land I would take to. And now that I put a little bit more thought into it, I, it makes a lot more sense. I was originally going to say Pandora hmm. uh, because of the storytelling there. Yeah. But I think I think what makes some of the places that you guys talked about better choices is that 
it leaves the story more open so that you can create more of the story yourself. And Pandora, you can get the story that they're trying to tell in the landscaping and the rides, and he would be blown away to see that, I think. Mm -hmm. But I think that an even better, and this is probably not even a very popular land, but I was just thinking about the Grizzly Peak area, DCA, Mm -hmm. is is another area where you've got, Soren would be an incredible ride that he would love to see. The raft ride, we can talk about that some other time. I'm not, I, <laughs> he knew you had to have filler rides, though. He knew. <laughs> yeah, but but I like that kind of ride generally, but that's like the most underwhelming river rapids. It's so generic. It's very It's gorgeous. really funny you say Fairly that because themed. we were just at Disney World for Thanksgiving, and when we were at Animal Kingdom, my kids will not go on Kali River Rapids because they say that Grizzly River Run is so much better. Weird. <laughs> like, why? Maybe. I've never been on Cali River. It's the same ride, but Cali has a lesson attached to it. It's you're learning about deforestation and why that's bad. It sounds (laughs) just as bad as it is. Yeah. (laughs) And so they they both were like, nope, I'd rather be on Grizzly River Run, which I want to learn. I want to get wet. It's a mountain (laughs) shaped like a bear. (laughs) The one and only time I went on Grizzly Grizzly River. Rapids run ride spectacular, whatever. Flash we got, town, we got stuck at the top of the final one big drop for a long time. Mm-hmm. So I think Sitting that kind there. of killed it for me. Um, but I love the theming of that area. I love the it's outdoor beautiful. adventure. And again, with his true life Cats adventures everywhere. films, mm-hmm. he'd be I think he would be blown away by what they did with Soren. And then there's also that adventure trail where families can play yes. together and create their story of an adventure mm-hmm. together. So I, I love that area. It's great. Plus the country bears wander around there. Yes, they do. <laughs> and and he liked the idea of the bear show. And that area leads right into the beautiful Grand Californian Hotel, which mm-hmm. he would super yes. love that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's where I would take him. Um, so we'll die, dial it down even a little bit more small. And what single rider attraction do you think you would want to take Walt to see? Starting with Zach. Zach. Do I get to start again? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I hope I don't take this from anyone's list, but it's also an attraction that I have not experienced yet. Uh, Runaway Railway. Yes, that's what I was going to say. Absolutely. Me too. No, no, that's okay. I'm glad somebody brought it up because, you know, I haven't even got to see it yet. Um, But I really, I know I haven't. I've ridden it dozens of times. But I know it's something that <laughs> I would love because I love Mickey the Mouse. Me too. And, and Walt and Walt loved Mickey. Um, yes. You know, he considered Mickey to be his family, a part of his family. And mm-hmm. I think that he would appreciate that um, Mickey finally has Mickey his own attraction. Finally. Yeah. Um, it is so worthy an attraction yeah. of Mickey. And it's it's the storytelling element is fantastic. And the technology is pretty cool. And the new art style. I, I, I sometimes and mm-hmm. I sometimes I wonder how you feel about the new art style. But Mickey's art style changed dr- dramatically the from the time you mm-hmm. know from the time that he mm-hmm. created Mickey till he died. Uh, so I think he would. Yeah. I don't even think that would bother him. I think he would appreciate that as well. No, and he appreciated mm-hmm. so many styles and kinds of art. Mm-hmm. Salvador Dali. He was a big fan of that, but that was nothing like what Walt was doing at the time. Yeah. Also, that too, the the way that Mickey's characterized in the newest versions are is a throwback to the way that he was in in the very beginning. Mm-hmm. He wasn't the yeah. Namby Pamby Bing Crosby that he turned into. A little bit of a scamp. He might be concerned with Goofy's new uh, heroin okay, addiction. Goofy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. mouth Goofy. Yeah, but, but Mickey yeah. was a little bit rude and a little bit uh, wild in the original. He's a lovable cartoons. scamp. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. I don't mind it. There are some iterations of the new Goofy that make me go, oof. He's funny, though. (laughs) Yeah, but he's very funny. Yeah. (laughs) I think I would go, and this is again on the storytelling vein with Rise of the Resistance, not necessarily for the technology of it, although that is cool. It's that ride is the epitome of storytelling. And from the second that you walk into the line, they're telling a story and every, you know, there's the, the pre-show. And then even after the pre-show, there's some of that stuff I like better than the ride itself. 
when they're transporting you from the pre-show to the ride is my favorite part mm-hmm. of that. And that is where I think they did something right in Galaxy's Edge. Yeah, I think um, he would totally have his mind yeah. blown, too, to see that one room where it looks like you're outside and they make it either sunny <laughs> or rainy or night. Shut or... up, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> I love riding that with people who haven't ridden it before and watching their faces in the transport. Yeah, my son happens that my I son didn't realize that who hasn't my son it. didn't realize that the transport wasn't the just the ride. Yeah, like he got in the transport and then like when it stopped and the doors go to open, he's like, "That was cool." And then they like came in and yelled at yeah. him, and he's like, yeah. "What is going you, on?" Yeah, like, you're still in the line, and then you walk into that room that you're on the deck of a star destroyer, and it's yeah. That room is still not the ride. The scale of that whole thing is just shocking. It's amazing. They did a really good job. And what is a (laughs) stormtrooper? Part of what they did great in there is that all the elements in that ride are elements that we know from the movies instead of generic. Mm -hmm. I think it would be cool. And yeah, anybody who he didn't, he hadn't seen Space War and. 1966 so but i think he would be intrigued by the idea and the the imagination that goes along along with it yeah definitely yeah how about you just well they stole both of my (laughs) choices there (laughs) um but i'll just then i'll just sort of back up but both of those rides runaway railway and rise would be perfect to show him because I think that, I mean, they're obviously like, they're the pinnacle of what Imagineering can do right now. And Mm -hmm. like, if, if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't have this level of, of input on a ride and the level of creativity um, that we get now. So I think either one of those would be amazing to show him just simply for being like, this is what you started by just sort of setting people together and sort of inspiring them and, and pushing them to creativity yeah and and finding people to be creative in ways that they haven't been before and that's sort of that's imagineering is is all of the all of the arts and and engineering styles put together to to create the best product so mm-hmm. i agree with you guys that's all i'll say <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i was gonna say flight of passage yeah just because mm-hmm. of the he was always so into new tech and i think that just kind of really reeks of new tech from he like the story even part of it is silly but the but the whole technology part where they're scanning you and pairing you with like it would just mm-hmm. be so mind-blowing to see that oh yeah and that yeah. ride still I, every single time i'm on that it still kind of takes my breath away a little bit mm-hmm. it's a great attraction it just doesn't lose its cool factor yeah, yeah. I don't like the pre-show stuff, though. No, get on with this. <laughs> it's really great Actually, right now because it's all yeah, it's all like that. half of it is wide open. <laughs> yeah, that show. You don't have to hear that guy tell you you're gonna uh fly fly. That show, <laughs> that pre-show stuff is okay to walk right through. Yeah, yeah. It seems interminable when you're yeah. on there. Mm-hmm. And why did we need this? At least it's very air conditioned. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, I think I would take him to, I was worried that someone was going to say it since we mentioned it in passing earlier, uh, Pirates in Shanghai. Mm-hmm. That was my because, that was my second choice. Yeah, because it's like, again, the evolution of what he started. He was so into, like, he was really geeked about that original ride. If, if you watch those Walt Disney Presents specials where mm-hmm. he takes you on the walkthrough through the scenes and he's so proud of his pirates and to see... I love so <laughs> <laughs> to see to see what we've what's been done with them and the incredible technology with the ride vehicles and all that stuff i think that would be pretty amazing for sure have. yeah i think you brought up a really good one earlier too dan was soren the original soren the soren over yeah. california mm-hmm. i think that would be a really mm-hmm. cool one mm-hmm. did you know they used an erector set to design the original really concept of that? Yeah. i had no idea <laughs> they never mentioned that really in any of the making of stuff, but it's true. <laughs> we haven't talked about erector sets in a long time. <laughs> so long. Thank you for bringing it back, Jeff. Okay, well, uh, what show or parade or nighttime spectacular or something of that nature would you want to show him? 
Because Walt Disney ooh, was a ooh. showman. Go, Jeff. Go. Jeff. Paint the night. Yeah. I know he loved a parade, and I think he would be mind blown on the the coolness of the paint the night and the, just the lights and the fun and the energy and all the whole thing is so good. And all of his good characters are That's still the in the best there. parade. Just I was going to say sort of almost the same thing, but just the show version, uh, World of Color. World of Color, yeah. Yeah, because I mean, that's, he had, didn't, what is it, what was it called? Walt Disney's World of Color and everything? Like he had, you know, he was all about sort of that. And yeah, those shows are literally the version they did for the 60th that ran for two and a half, three years. That made me cry every time. I like that better than the original or the redo, but Mm -hmm. They're, they're all great. But, Zach uh, and I were slobbering all over each other when oh, we saw yeah. that one together. It was yeah. great. Man, I missed the whole show. Guys, get yeah. a room. <laughs> I'd probably say happily ever after. And part of that is the, the cool projection technology on the castle. That you can take the beautiful castle and transform it completely into something else and into part of the show. And that... Um, that icon mm-hmm. from that park that becomes part of the show is is amazing. Yeah. And all the fireworks are cool, too, but <laughs> the projections are what make that show. I know. And what they're doing to the castle now for, for Christmas, it's just gorgeous. Almost everything they're doing now is would just be mind-blowing to someone from the late right? 60s. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No kidding. Well, all of mine were taken. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Good night, everybody. I, I wrote a note, and may, maybe you guys can help me because I wrote a note here, DF, and I don't remember what that stands Disneyland for. Disneyland Forever? That's mm-hmm. it. Forever. Yes, Disneyland That was going to be my second choice, and I thought Zach yeah. would choose Disneyland Forever. Yeah. Even though I never that got to see it. That one was cool. Oh, that one was so cool. I loved the way that they, they uh, sort of incorporated... Um, you know, Tinkerbell flies on that line, but then for Disneyland Forever, they had Nemo on it, and, mm-hmm. uh, and all of Main else. Street being the house from projections. Up. And oh yeah, the alive. house from Up, yes. And the Matterhorn got involved. Yeah, that show is ridiculous. Like, into, like obviously, good. we would have taken him to see uh, Rivers of Light. We are one, of too. course, <laughs> of course, yeah. Yeah. It's our favorite. <laughs> Why is the barge sinking? <laughs> <laughs> I guess you could take the view on, you could choose certain things for all these topics where it'd be like, what What do we need to show Walt so that he can whip somebody's ass? Yes. And get them yeah. to so if you ever think this else. is a good idea, don't. <laughs> don't do it again. Yeah. Mine, I, I think you might not think of right away when you think of shows, and I haven't seen this one yet, but, and I tried to avoid Galaxy Edge spoilers for so long, but it's been open for so long and I haven't yeah. seen it yet. So I went ahead and I've watched some videos and I think I would take him to the, uh, to, uh, Savi's workshop. Oh, to see oh that yeah. Show. yeah. Because that storytelling. First is we'd so have to effective. show him some Star Wars films. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shouldn't this be called War of the Stars? I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> you've, you've got this show that's so effective and Im- emotionally manipulative that grown men leave it crying apparently how did we make all these grown men cry that's what i was just gonna say all these grown folks are crying and on top of that they pay an extra 200 dollars yeah. for oh, the opportunity yeah, he, really he would love that he would love that yeah, <laughs> yeah. so i think he'd i think he'd really enjoy i love laser swords crying and 200 dollars yeah yeah it's like a peep show at times square yes Kind yeah. of, yeah. <laughs> uh, so Walt also had his hands, his hand in uh, developing some pretty incredible restaurants mm-hmm. at the parks uh, that we've seen, and some crazy ideas that he have that never saw the live day. Someday we'll have to talk about the proposed uh, Chinatown section for Main Street USA oh. and the Chinese restaurant that he wanted to build yeah. there. Um, but so, what restaurant would you like to take Walt to eat at? Flows V Eight Cafe. Flows, yeah. <laughs> No. Am I starting I again? Some things fixed yeah, there. go, go okay. for it. Yeah, exactly. uh, this one, I, for some reason, this is the easiest one for me to come up with, and I would love to take Walt to Hoop De Doo Musical Review. Dang it. Oh, I, yeah. think he, I think he would love that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's the for closest sure. to like his concept of like he wanted the jungle or the, uh, the uh, Enchanted the, Tiki Room. Tiki, tiki room. room to be a show. That's the closest thing. I still to want that. that to be a restaurant. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
That well, he had awesome. his diamond horseshoe and his gold. Well, yeah, the diamond mm-hmm. was the one at Disneyland, right? Yeah. 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 And and that was his absolute favorite thing. I mean, he would he went there constantly. And, just and it's just like the next level show. version. It's so good. It's just such a good show. Not right mm-hmm. now, unfortunately. Yeah. But it better come back. Yeah. It's, I hope it's so. exactly the kind of corn pone hokum that. Yes, I love it. <laughs> I do too. And I, I was gonna, dinner theater, I would, and I love it. <laughs> but you love it. I was going to say Skipper Canteen mm-hmm. because he loved That's Jungle good. Cruise, and I love how they have merged the 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 you know the stupid punny jokes <laughs> with the with the atmosphere in there. I love that place. I love the puns. Is that the only oh. restaurant that's based on a ride? Yeah. Well, um, uh, yeah, Blue Bayou ride, is yeah. in the ride, but it's not in really the, technically based around US, pirates. Um, yeah. Was Blue Bayou Bistro open Shea while he Rim. was still alive, or was that newer? I don't know. I don't uh, know. Zach, was Blue Bayou open when when uh, Walt was still alive? Didn't he miss New Orleans? Not I sure. think he, he missed it. Orleans? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, because yeah, he was going to be uh, my choice was the. New Orleans Square was so finished mm-hmm. after he died. Yeah. So oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Bistro Chez Remy in in Paris is based yes. on that ride. Yeah. You you end in Remy's restaurant, and that's kind of the culmination of the ride. Is the the ride is his yeah. journey to become a chef. And then and we when you timed get it off as the, such ride. the first time we went there that we ate there right after it's we rode it. For, so we got perfect. off the ride and went back out and went right into yeah. the restaurant. It's like perfect if you can time it that way because it's the natural ending of the ride. Remy is a chef now and you shrink down to a rat. And that that restaurant Spoiler is alert. just gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is... It's kind of the same concept as Toy Story Land, right? It it, it really immerses you in that ride in that movie. Well, I and when you when you first go in, everything's normal size, and then mm-hmm. as you after they call you to your table in the hallway, the pictures start getting bigger and yeah. bigger and bigger as you get smaller. <laughs> it's nice. so cute, and then you're sitting at a table that's your your chair might be a champagne cork. Mm-hmm. It's cute. I'm gonna issue it. a small retraction. Oh, New Orleans yes. Square opened in July of 1966. He died in December. Yeah, he, so. he died. Yeah, he but died Blue Bay opened in 67, so he did not see Blue Bay. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah. That's what we've got Zach go around, around along. For. That's why we have a Disney historian on board mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. fact check. For Jess, us. did you name a restaurant? I did not. Um, I would uh, take him to Tiffin's um, because I, if we're getting lunch, I just want to get some shrimp and grits and I don't really care what he thinks. (laughs) He think it was nice. Yeah, I get the shrimp. So what's this all about? Shut up, man. I'm eating shrimp and grits. All right. Like, I'm not a tour guide all day. I have a pickled stick. What do you mean outside? Drink your scotch mist and keep quiet. Yeah. I can't can't smoke in here. I just want those shrimp and grits. So that's not in 2000 in the 2000s, sir. We don't smoke anymore. (laughs) <laughs> inside not where other people can see us yeah dan well oh were you serious about flows jeff no i blew by you he said blue oh, by you oh yeah. you said oh we skipped her i would never take it i mean it flows is super cute like the outside <laughs> i love taking pictures of flows but their food is hot garbage <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes it's not even hot <laughs> it's cold garbage <laughs> I, yeah, I would take was, him to Blue Bayou because it's just so cool and the theme is yeah. neat and I love seeing the the ride vehicles go by. Mm-hmm. I think they call them boats. <laughs> Usually. <laughs> um, this is one that I had a hard time thinking of a good answer for, but I guess maybe for that is similar similar reasons for the kind of magic of of the gimmick of it, maybe take him to Beer Garden. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. that, I think you'd enjoy it. Oh, yeah. like, oh, it sounded I'm like you said Be the- Our Garden. I was like, did you oh, combine God. Beer Garden and Be Our Guest? I would never take that. To be our, be our Guest where you can get really drunk. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love Beer Garden. Yeah, the co- the communal feel of it all, he would love that. Right. Anytime I can go into a building from the daytime and it's I'm magically outside at night, Yeah, I, I can get behind that. So he might, he like might enjoy you. it. Yeah, or sci-fi, sci-fi dine-in. You might enjoy it. Oh, too. yeah, that one's cool. You wouldn't enjoy the food, but I think you'd enjoy the ambiance. I think that I like. I don't place. like their food. They have a good I food. I don't like is that you I have to like, sit, burgers, like facing yeah. away from each other. It's weird. It's awkward mm-hmm. place depending to eat. On, depending on who you're there with, that might be okay. 
<laughs> after staring point. at your family all day. <laughs> you stare at the back of their heads. Everyone face the forward back. and don't <laughs> talk to me. <laughs> Shut up and watch the movie. So what hotel are you going to take him to? I don't know. Uh, Whose turn is it? Jeffrey Williams. Jeffs. I maybe I think probably Yacht and Beach Club. It kind of feel or yeah, the Yacht and Beach. It feels like the era of things he liked and he loved cruising and that whole mm-hmm. vibe. I think he would dig that. I was going to say Riviera and it's because really of that. Nice. Yeah, I was going to say Riviera because of that because it's all no, it was kind one. of inspired by his love of. Europe and cruising, and I think it's just a gorgeous resort. Like probably all star sports. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, then you might laugh at mine. I'm going to say Pop Century. Mm. And I'm going to say that for one single reason, and that is because it's a way to show him that the company isn't just solely focused on getting Luxury. every last dollar out of every rich person they That's can. That they're are options for families on a budget still Mm -hmm. and that you know because he he wanted to make money yes it's he was a businessman but and and he also wasn't uh what some people like to think you know this just completely not concerned with money in the slightest and just wanted everybody to have a wonderful day he he was somewhere in between and you know he did he was concerned about people being able to afford it so i think pop is a good yeah, way to show okay to, it's okay to be both of those things yeah yeah exactly yeah. and he he did it well he showed how you could do it so mm-hmm. i think he would he would appreciate and it's it. still a beautifully themed resort and it's oh, I love pop, yeah. rooms and yeah that's a good point it's a lot of fun it's not it's not it's definitely not my style but yeah, sure. You know, kids go crazy kids for that place. Love it. That my my it son can. is disappointed when we do not stay there now. So I was like, we've we've upgraded a little bit, buddy. We don't stay on <laughs> at the values as much anymore. And he's like, but Pop has this. And I'm like, yeah, but this one has better. He's like, I don't care. It's Pop. This one has a better I bar. Right. <laughs> Daddy, needs. Daddy can get better mixed drinks here, son. You need to let this happen. All right. I don't know that pool bar at Pop. I've spent a lot of time and dollars a there. Be pool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You can get a frozen Jack and Coke now. It's really good. Ooh. Uh, what about you, Zach? Heather? Or Zach? Who's whoever's turn? Um, I uh, had a toss up between two, and they're both very similar. They both have the same designer, so I'm going to go with uh, Wilderness Lodge or yes. Animal Kingdom Lodge. Yeah, uh, just because of Walt's love for the outdoors and and, and mm-hmm. nature and adventure. Um, I think he'd like Grand California too. Also, same. Yeah, abs- yeah ex- absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, the I'm idea that favorites. you can be in Grand California and look into the park there is pretty oh, cool. Yeah. Also, you know, having the Savannah in Animal Kingdom Lodge, I think that yeah. was I think that would blow his. Oh mind. yeah, he thought there's a giraffe outside. Yeah, the you room. could even pull that off. Like, mm-hmm. what? like that's just kind of it's pretty high concept, pretty amazing. Yeah, I was, I was, I think it, I don't even have a good option uh, that hasn't been named. <laughs> I was good, you know, maybe art of animation for a similar kind of thing. I thought uh, of that just because yeah. of his love for the art of animation, mm-hmm. just to that he could see yeah. that it's still being celebrated and, and yeah. Plus, plus, the, you know the the level of theming and that that's a good family space. So I think mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. the Polynesian too. Sorry, mm-hmm. yeah, He's, he love of tiki culture. Yeah. They've done a great job with the theming in all of the resorts that they've built. Yeah, really. I think you get a kick out of Grand Destino. Yeah, and like man, you never, you never finished Salvador it. Salvador Dali. I mean, they were buddies, so yeah, he'd like that. And it's a really good hotel. It is. I think I'll stay there uh, next month. Me too. <gasps> Fun. Did we just become best friends? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, so move we'll move away from the, the theme park experience. So what and this is I guess it gives you a lot of options for what you could pick, but like a non theme park property or an experience or if you just wanted to show him like this is something that your company has done and accomplished um that's not a theme park or a movie but what do you want to show him to kind of say this is this is the dcl cruise line oh that's the one i was gonna say too i know that's why i jumped in and said it first (laughs) 
Honestly, that's what we all should have thought of. That yeah. or Aulani, probably. Oh, uh, yeah. I was thinking of Adventures by Disney, yeah. which it is a very, very high-end product, and it's not something that does cater to the the families on the lower end like we were just talking about. <laughs> you can't but, always, you know. <laughs> yeah, but it does take the storytelling of Disney all over the world. Yeah. And I think that that's fantastic. Yeah, and he had ideas for for small parks all over the country. I mean, so many small experiences that he wanted to do that was going to be bring bring Disney to Milwaukee or mm-hmm. you know, yeah. <laughs> a ski lodge in California and all this stuff. So I think he'd enjoy seeing that. Yeah, and it does, while it is high end, uh, it does cater to the family experience, which was something that was important to him that... Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, the adults and their children can experience together. And it's something that didn't exist in that space for touring the world on a family scale before Adventures by Disney. And I think it's great. Yeah. I think Just, he'd appreciate that. I think one thing I would show him that's sort of a, an aspect that's not physically tangible is I would just sort of take him around to meet cast members. Um, mm-hmm. it's a pretty sad thing to think about right now, but I, I feel that cast members are such an important part of an experience of a Disney theme park, hotel, whatever. Um, and I think mm-hmm. that he would be very pleased with how the, the sort of the standards for cast members mm-hmm. are still upheld and yeah, how I think he thought, I think he agreed with you. I think he thought that as a company excluded. Yeah, <laughs> I think that he would be extremely proud of yeah what he sort of set as a standard and how it is still drawing in people that, you know, gladly go above and beyond for guests, you know, day in mm-hmm. and day out. So they're, he they're was always in the park, you know, yeah. just wandering. And uh, Josh tomorrow reminds me of him in that yeah. aspect. Like when he was in his role at Walt Disney World, I saw him so many times, you know, he, he was he was just he was really there to interact with the cast mm-hmm. members and even see still how they were going. And he's with still his newer doing role. It. He's still mm-hmm. in now the he's, parks. He's out on the other coast and you see him. He pops but not always. And, he's back and forth. Yeah, yeah that's true. Since one's open, you kind of want to yeah. be with that one. <laughs> yeah, but that that really reminded me of of Walt and the way that he saw his role as as leading the company. Yeah, he he did need to be in the park, interacting with not just the guests but the cast members. Yeah. Yep. Who would not have? I mean, that's the one thing. At, at Any time anybody says, if you could go back in time and do one thing or have dinner with somebody who's not alive. And it's, I would want to go to Disneyland with Walt Disney. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Go sit on a bench. Jeff, what about you? But (laughs) we're playing a game. He said, I I went first. I thought that was sad. Pay attention, Dan. Hey, I didn't say I was good at this. Uh, <laughs> my my choice is a little bit selfish, but I would want to give him a crowbar and take him to that magical, <laughs> take him to that magical uh, uh, warehouse from that they show you in the prop culture show. Um, oh and yeah, and just tell him to just go and explore and open up the crates. Oh, cool! What and a great just idea! To, just to watch him relive the memories of things from when he was alive. That uh, hmm. You know, that he has a connection to and to let mm-hmm. him discover the new things. I think that I'd give him a key. They did. Well, yeah, a key, but he needs a crowbar <laughs> to open up the crates. Oh, I'm an old yeah. man. I've <laughs> been dead for decades. Well, I can't do this. you crowbar, I thought you were going to ask him to <laughs> smash something. Take it to Bob Chapek's knees, apparently. I, think. <laughs> <laughs> I just meant so he could open up the crates and really explore. I mean, like, can you imagine, like, like, just... Let him wander around the corner and see that shrink ray from Honey, I Shrunk the mm-hmm. Kids. Like, yeah, I love that give show. Him a second. But, yeah. Or all give, the the yeah. heads and different sculptures and stuff we saw on the uh, Adventures oh, by Disney. Yeah. yeah. I want to get that his opinion on cool. uh, the Spectro Magic Men and see what what kind of drugs <laughs> did you guys invent for this? <laughs> yeah. And just knowing, you know, because he was, a, he was a, a rather sentimental person. It mm-hmm. seems like. So I think that, you know, like when 
If I shed a tear when they opened up that crate and show you those carousel horses from Mary Poppins, oh, I can only imagine yeah. what his reaction would be like. And I would love. <laughs> I want to watch that to show that, again. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I'm gonna. I'm a gonna. All right, so we've got a couple of spare hours left before our day with Walt is over. So I was just wondering, what movie would you want to sit down and watch with him to wind down at the end of the day? I wanted to pick a Pixar film, um, and I have to go with my favorite Pixar film, which is Ratatouille. Cars 2. <laughs> that is not. Planes. <laughs> Fire and Rescue. <laughs> Uh, but just because that's you know, the next evolution of animation, right? That the, the Pixar films and which one I did you love, actually choose? I, I said earlier. Ratatouille, uh. my favorite <laughs> Pixar film. Uh, the storytelling and and the the music is beautiful, and the the, the just, I just I love that movie. Why would they let a rat in the kitchen? <laughs> <laughs> is it making chili? He's making chili. It's okay. He could make you some chili, Walt. <laughs> Remy would would make you some chili. Only he'd make it taste good. I had the thought of, <clears throat> since time jumping is allowed, it would be to watch Avengers Endgame in a theater on opening night with him, so that he Ooh, can see yeah. the school. Who are these people? Uh, what? <laughs> yeah. Well, that that part would be confusing, but just the total thrill that everybody in yes. that theater had and that shared experience of people just going jumping wild. up and yeah, cheering people, and myself yeah. and my son included jumping out of our seats they're like oh my god that thing happened and yes like i think just to see that movies are that big a deal and that interactive still would would still. be good where's howard the duck i thought he was in this <laughs> Yeah, can you imagine what he, how he'd feel when he saw, you know, the part where Ant Man crawls up Thanos' butt to kill him? <laughs> Is that guy a tree with a raccoon? I, you know what, kids? I got, I'm done. I can't do entertainment anymore. This doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I, uh, I would show him. I've talked about it before. I have a very special place in my heart for Meet the Robinsons. I feel oh, that I do love that movie. I feel that that movie is is criminally underrated, and mm-hmm. it is it is. One of the like quintessential Disney style movies. Uh, it's got mm-hmm. so much heart. And then, you know, like uh, the first time I ever watched it, I was like, oh, this movie's so good. It's so cute. And then it gets to the end and it ties in the theme of the movie to my favorite Walt Disney quote of all time. And I just I think I cried for like 30 minutes after that. I was like, this is beautiful. Oh, God. Like, I didn't see it coming. Like the way that they tie it in with him just gets me every time. What so. quote? I've never seen um, that movie. So oh, the Zach. hold up. The theme of the movie is is keep moving forward, and then they tie that in at the end to his his quote about you know around here we don't look back for very long we we keep yeah. moving forward opening new doors that sort of thing so yeah. you that's need my to favorite watch quote of his. Movie, Zach. You've Zach, never you seen it? Seen? No, I've never seen it. Oh, it's so good, dude! Yes, you, you really you need, need to watch it. And to since you love Disney Carousel of Progress, you need to watch yes. it. And that's all I'll say. I insist that next month when y'all are at. Disney World, you Chromecast Disney Plus and show him that. Yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. I, we'll have to watch that. Yeah, mm, y'all consider him in your negligee <laughs> and watch <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's order bonbons. <laughs> what about you, Zach? Um, I think mine's kind of obvious. Um, I, I would want to show him, Mr. Banks. Mar- uh, you know, actually, that's not a bad one, but I was going with Mary Poppins Returns. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, uh, he course. wanted he wanted to make more Mary Poppins movies. He didn't he, did. he didn't have his sights set on just the first one, albeit that is the 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 original and and the and the better one. But um, I think being able he would have the context of seeing the original, knowing what they were, what they had to work with, what what their limitations were, and seeing mm-hmm. what we were what we're able to do with the same concept in 2018. I think would be interesting that, and um, I have to show an animated movie, Princess and the Frog. Mm-hmm. Ooh, that's a good one. But it's yeah. a it's a fantastic film, and uh, the first Black Disney princess, I think, is mm-hmm. is is an important movie. So I felt that that one should be shown, and it's the last uh, hand drawn animated film that we've gotten. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, that's true. I was I was kind of torn between. I was trying to choose. I had three or four options for um, between either like the princess and the frog brave tangled and maybe even like Mulan 
they kind of show him where his princess is. Where mm, his princess yeah, sure. Oh. Yeah. To, to to where you know they've evolved from the Snow Whites or yeah, not needing to be babies. rescued, but doing yeah. the rescuing. Yeah, and yeah, you know, and that's why I was a little iffy. I'm Mulan takes a weird turn where it's like she doesn't need the man, but then she needs the man at the end. And, <laughs> yeah, but, but like, and I guess kind of tangled this. I don't know, but. Yeah, any of these strong, independent women. But I think Princess and the Frog would be the one I would choose just because also the fact that the first uh, black princess and she's just doing it for herself. And I think that's... Mm -hmm. This is weird. When do they sleep? Where's the part where they're sleeping in the forest? That's... (laughs) They're doing too much. Go to sleep. (laughs) Well, that's all the the categories I had. I, I think that... I think that if we were able to show Walt all of that stuff all in one day, he'd be pretty, pretty proud of what, what his mm-hmm, company mm-hmm. has done with what he started with. And then he'd be like, don't put me back. It's cold and dark there. <laughs> it's an infinite abyss of nothing. <laughs> <laughs> the views expressed by Jess are not necessarily those. <laughs> oh, and, but can we all agree to take him to specifically, can it be Disneyland during Christmas? Sure. Yeah, yep. yeah, the most magical yeah, time. I would like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe not this year, though. No, no, not yeah. this year. <laughs> Why can't I go in? <laughs> <laughs> are, are you wearing mask? You're gonna mess up my mustache. <laughs> <laughs> can't smoke a pickled cigarette through a mask. Well, thanks for hanging out with us again this week. Thanks for hanging out with us again this week. If you're excited to visit Walt Disney's Magic Kingdoms or explore anywhere else around the world. Key to the World Travel has a 1970s midnight blue Chevy van with murals on the sides of a celestial Pegasus, rear passenger windows shaped like crescent moons, leather-wrapped steering wheels, screwdriver shift lever, and Guinevere vanity plates full of expert travel planners ready to make your vacation dreams a reality. Head to www.keytotheworldtravel.com to get started with the no-obligation quote. Don't forget to catch up with our friend, the Theme Park Professor, for all the latest theme park news and tips at www.themeparkprofessor.com. Word of mouth is always the best way to help us grow our show. If you have a friend or two who you think would appreciate our special brand of globetrotting jackassery, tell them what makes our show so great and send them our way. You can find links to subscribe to the show on your favorite apps at www.goldkeyadventures.com. A huge thanks to our very good friend, Zach, for joining us this week for our show. Thank you, Zach. Which one is Zach? (laughs) The new voice. You're welcome. (laughs) Come back again, Zach. Anytime. Yes, please. I've got some ideas for topics. Yes. Oh, he's on. Yay. He's, he, he's on. He's we recorded have that now. recorded. <laughs> we can't back out. <laughs> it's binding contract. We can't wait to hang out with you again next week, and we'll see you real soon. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Don't take Walter Flows. To ask a question or share your travel story, you can reach us by smoke signal, carrier pigeon, or send an email to goldkeyadventurers at gmail.com. And make sure you follow the Gold Key Adventure Society on Facebook and Instagram. A huge thanks to our sponsor, Key to the World Travel. For all your travel planning needs, visit www.keytotheworldtravel.com for a free quote and help planning the trip of a lifetime. Tell them the Gold Key Adventurers sent you. That's www.keytotheworldtravel.com. Key to the World Travel, your key to a magical vacation. Thanks to Outer Vibe for the use of their song, Hoka Hey, for the intro and outro of our show. Find them on Facebook at The Outer Vibe or check out www.outervibe.com for tour dates, music, merch, and more. We'll see you next week for another meeting of the Gold Key Adventure Society. And until then, remember, life is short and the world is wide. So go have an adventure.